All right, hello guys. So uh, a lot of people were asking me at the uh, World Championship how this cascade lift was built. Uh, we're uh, Team 993 Salone Dreadnought. This is actually our last year. We were uh, seniors, so I'm kind of just sharing this design so anybody can use it in the future. Uh, I'm just gonna go over how cascade lift works and then I'll go over like how we built this one specifically. I'm just raising it up to make it more clear. So uh, to start off, um, this first chain link here, you can see these two, these are just connected for strength. Um, they're linked around four motors uh, on sprockets directly uh, for as little friction as possible. And then the important connection is right here where the uh, perpendicular bearing connects to an axle directly connected to the next stage, which means when these motors spin this sprocket, it forces the next stage up. Now, when you have the next stage does a very similar thing, but it has to do it in two places. So the next link, which isn't connected to any motors, is just linked around itself. And again, it's two links for strength. It's connected to both the first stage right here. You can see the perpendicular bearings in there. And then it's also connected to the third stage right here. So the way it works is basically when this stage is forced upward, it holds, in, it holds the chain in place, forcing the chain to spin. And when the chain is forced to spin, these connections here force the third stage up. And using this mechanic, you can make a cascade lift for theoretically infinite stages. Uh, this one in particular is five stages. So uh, like you can see here, this stage again has two links for strength. Uh, it's connected back here. And then it is also connected up here with these perpendicular bangs. And then the final stage is just one link because it only has to lift the final stage. So it's just one link. And then it's connected in here. And we have our four bar. You know, it's going down and up. So I'll just do a quick zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And then I'll go into like some of the you know special tricks that this lift uses to keep low friction and get high and go quick that you might have seen at the World Championship. And also, so you could build it and use it in future competitions, like the next one, which is Turning Point. Like you have to place the caps on the poles and you know, a quick cascade could potentially be the way to go. So anyway, uh, just looking at the first stage, we have uh, four motors, but you can kind of build it with a certain amount of motors that will fit your needs. And these are the, I don't remember the exact sprocket size, but I'll give a little 18. zoom in on them. 18 teeth? All right, uh, but you can see the sprocket size, so that's what we used. And these are torque motors, and uh, they're directly connected, and then we put a piece of metal in the middle to keep the axle from bending from all the tension in the chain. And the same thing goes down here. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, we'll go around again. You can see that the motor's just directly connected to it to keep the friction as low as possible. And then on each link, it's kind of black right now, but this is actually white lithium grease. My hand's getting all greasy from it. Uh, you just grease down every link and it keeps the friction nice and smooth. And then when you're linking the C channels, we held them in using a special spacer, which I'll show right here. It's, it's this one right here. Um, we laser cut ours, but you can also buy these. It's legal to buy these. You can also sand down regular spacers. They are the same thickness or depth of regular spacers, but they're less wide. They have a smaller radius. So they fit nicely in there and allow the metal to slide right through them. So you, again, you can either buy those or laser cut them and either way is illegal and you can run those on this lift. And um, so that's how we connect them. And at the bottom, this is where you, uh, because the four bars up at the top, you feel when the lift is kind of like this, right? You feel on this stage, for example, you feel uh, torque pushing in this way and pulling out this direction up here. So basically this doesn't do very much, but this actually holds in a lot of weight, this one right here. So I reinforce these on a bearing, uh, go underneath, as you can see here, I reinforce these on a bearing to make them a little stronger so they wouldn't uh, break or bend or anything. So they stay nice and strong and push up against the grease and it slides nice and smoothly. Uh, and 
The chain is on, uh, they're actually, the inserts are circles, so they spin freely to keep friction low. Uh, there's two per link, so one to keep it stronger, uh, and also if one breaks, the lift will continue to work. So if we lost this link, or even that link, or one of those, we could still run the whole lift uh, in a match. And um, the latex is also something important. So latexing and uh, or, or rubber banding of this type of lift is kind of tricky because when you have this distance here, you have to make it so that the tension here is similar as when it's all the way stretched out. And so the way we tackle that is by uh, adding extra stands of latex here on pulley wheels that the uh, that roll around on the latex, which keeps the latex at a much more constant length, which also means it stays at a much more constant force, which allows the lift to main, maintain a pretty constant speed going all the way up and all the way down. And so just a couple other things. Um, you can use, we use uh, this size sprocket here with three wide C channels. You can also use the size smaller sprocket with two wide C channels and get away with it. We used standoffs to connect the C channels in the middle. You can see this little blue tape on it. It's connecting the C channels in the middle link. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much the basic of it. And I'll do like one more pan down it so you can kind of see the whole lift. And then I'll do one more back out and then we'll just call it a day on that. And oh yeah, I'll go over, I'll go over the pin release real quick. So the latex holds the lift at about this height which is out of 18 pretty clearly, but we added, can you put it in? Yeah. We added a pin release here that slides into the, the hole. And so when the motors push down on the lift, the pin release pops right out because it loses all its friction being held in and it goes out. So it just holds in right here. It just slides into the hole. So that's kind of how we did our pin release and just general stuff like that. I'll do one more pin out. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, maybe you found it helpful, and uh, maybe this will be a good design or option and turning point. Of course, you'll have to use V5 motors, you probably only want like one or two. But yeah, so that's it. Thank you for watching.